Somebody started. <clears throat> Go ahead, Chief. Okay. Welcome everybody to the joint board meeting between Western Lane Fire and Ambulance Authority, Southwest Valley Fire and Rescue, and Western Lane Ambulance District for November 16th, 2023. Um, would you rise and please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which stands for the one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, thank yeah. you. Holly, could you do a roll call, please? Yes. Western Lane and Wolfia Directors, Cindy Russell. Here. Linda Stent. Mike Webb. Here. Adam Holbrook. And Vanessa Bus. SVFR and Wolfia Directors, Tim Mendolia. Jim Polisi. Here. David Carrillo. Here. Lori Heppel. And Keith Stanton. Here. Okay, we have a quorum for SVFR, not for Western Lane Ambulance District. Uh, Vanessa did say she was not going to be here tonight, and Lori Heppel said she was not going to be here tonight, so we knew that they were gone. Two excuses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, public, are there any public comments? Hey. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So we would like to swear in, we have two firefighters to swear in. Chief, we were just we're waiting on a couple of people for for that. Okay. You will let me know when right. people arrive. Yeah, we can do that. Do that. So moving on to the consent agenda, um, consisting of the meeting minutes from the regular meeting, October twenty sixth, staff reports and correspondence. Would anybody like anything pulled out of the consent agenda for discussion? Very none consent agenda is adopted. Matt, call volumes. Call volumes for the month of October. We did see an increase you know, across the board on overall call volume, but we're still falling behind the year to date. Um, significant inter facility transfer increases year to date and decreased transports year to date for PMS. Any questions? And you said that the um, also, community paramedics staying about steady. Yeah, they're, she's averaging about 24 to 30 calls and her visits in a month, which has been pretty consistent. Um, they were practice in Wayne's, of course. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be taking a week here, potentially. Potentially, yeah. 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 I would like to also just add on what's on the calls yeah. for call breakdown because we can't really give data to particular calls, but we had two pretty significant structure fires over the last two weeks. And just kudos again to our first punch and how we've been handling things. And we're still developing that counter punch per se, but they did a really good job. The shed fire was a long in operations, six hours. Um, all the staff on them did a great job managing it, rehabbing, going through it. And then we had a condo slash unit fire uh, part of a 12 complex condo building, but we isolated to just bring in contents. <clears throat> uh, monthly financials. So we are 34% of the way into the fiscal year. Um, the financials in this board packet do not contain any of the system design reports, just so that you know that they will be in next month's packet and will kind of be one off um, just because the board meet, uh, meetings are earlier this month. Um, we don't get them in time. Um, tax dollars have started rolling in. Um, you won't see that on this report, um, but you will see it on next month's. Um, 
And then we also set up today, as a matter of fact, taxes will start going into the, each of the LGIP accounts for each entity uh, starting November 28th. So they'll be earning a higher interest rate with those dollars. So old business, uh, we um, reviewed, uh, board reviewed uh, job descriptions, firefighter paramedic, paramedic. Uh, two policies, uh, ADA policy 108 and civil service commission 110. Are there any comments on those policies? Any suggestions for changes? Any concerns? Awesome. Thank you. Um, old business item C. Should we put that to the next one? Yes. Okay. We don't have it's, be a... it's still going to, it's not going to affect anything. So, so. Um, whole business item D, supplemental budget. Chris. But can we do that one? Because it's a, it's a Rokia thing and we don't have a foreign to Rokia. Yeah. Yeah, I will have to wait for the next one. And that's okay to be pushed forward? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just moving money around. Okay. Um, so next I um Fire Special Director David Myers, 9949 Big Creek Road. And if you remember we talked a little bit about it last month and and um he just sent me this today. Uh this is a plot plan. We wanted more information about what he was doing. Again, he lives. Uh, several miles outside our, the northern end of our district on Big Creek Road. And he wants to, he either wants to have a fire suppression agreement or to annex in, into our prop, into our district. And the issue, the reason he wants to do that, and you don't see that red mark, the red mark up here, and I'm sorry, Jim, you can't see this, but, um, so that distance that I have a red line on there, and it's not on your map, but but that area there, that needs to be a hundred feet, and it's only forty-two and a half feet for the the county to approve that building, unless he's in a fire district, and then that goes down to thirty feet. So that's his incentive. That's why. That's why he wants this agreement, and the county is pushing him towards that way. His alternative is to get an easement with his neighbor. And for whatever reason, that's not feasible. I'm not sure why. But um, he's, there is an existing um, modular home or, or um, what the one I'm thinking of before. Really Manufacturing home. There. And he wants to put a sick built 500 to 800 square feet. It's going to be small. Um, there. We, if he is, if we do have an agreement with them, we would have the right to, to specify um, some requirements for the driveway. I have to have a turnaround for that. I think it's 250 feet, so more than 150 feet. And then I, I want to know what that bridge, there's a small bridge there. We can fit across it wide enough. I just don't know the capacity of that bridge was. So we have to find that out. So that's his request and what he is planning on doing. And that's the reason it's that he can do the 30 feet, he can't do the, the 100 feet. So uh, our options, board options are to say, no, we want no part of that property. Two would be to annex it into our district and we can do a separate area. We don't have to be contiguous or to have a fire suppression agreement. With, with him. And this would be to annex in, that would be an S, SBFR decision. Um, but I I propose that it's a wealthy discussion uh, like that. And we don't necessarily have to, we can wait until we have more people present to discuss this. But um, and I mean, like you bridge. brought up the bridge, the bridge is pretty important. And he's willing to agree to what we wanted to do as far as a turnaround or something that was strengthers or whatever else. 
It'd be nice to have a little more information. If he's willing to do that, yeah. he's asking if he's, what he's willing to do. Yeah, because because there's certain things that we would need. And we want definitely want to find out the capacity of that bridge. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we have several bridges in our district that we can't put an engine across. So that wouldn't be unusual. Mm -hmm. But um, it's not good. <laughs> so, a little water tender. Yeah. As I recall, at the last meeting, it was discussed that by the time we got there, in response, whatever got fired would be gone. And, and that's a lot of our district, or not a lot, but, but the outlying areas, absolutely. It's on 38 minutes, I recall. I don't know if it'd be, it'd be close to that. It'd be close to 30 minutes, yeah, at least. So, yeah, the proposal, I think Director Felici said, have, have a sprinkler system there, and we could we could make that proposal. Very small. That's pot. what I still would recommend, Chief Shet. Yeah. I would uh, I I would not move forward with this potential agreement unless he per, unless he provides a 13D fire sprinkler system for all of his new structures. Okay. What about that's, that's that's my mm -hmm. thought. If we if we can't get an engine, we can't get a tender. And how how big is the main home going to be? The 500 acre square feet. That's what you told it. The main home's only going to be that big? Yeah. Oh, great. Very he's probably going to need a, uh, he's probably going to need a baker tank or something like that with a uh, jockey pump on it. If he, if he puts in a sprinkler system, yeah. Correct. Correct. But I strongly recommend that he look at uh, built in base fire protection systems due to our response time because remember our response time is based on our on duty crew so right. you know we cannot forget our rate payers that are within the spectrum of the uh, um, immediate dispatch area so that would be a, a sprinkler system um, as a requirement to have a suppression agreement with them or to annex the property For both Either either one, either one. Got so to agree to put in a, a 13D compliant system. So annexation would still be an option for, for the board, is what you're saying? Correct. I think what he also mentioned was all structures on that property. Are you saying all structures? All new, all new structures. All new structures. Or, or renovated. Either both new structures are renovated. If he touches an existing building, he's got to bring it up. I think he's going to remove the existing building and then put a 500 to 800 square foot building in its in its place. Okay. What's more profitable for the district to annex in you pay tax base or the charge of fee? We would charge the same. Okay. It just seems like a long way for them to go on that strip of the strip. Yes, it's in our access service area. Yeah, we do send an ambulance with the fire hose. With the fire hose. It is. We're having a spawn mutual aid on the K2. Probably, no, we probably sent. Have people come here to Florence to cover us. Yeah. Not uh, really out there. No, I mean, if they had a fire there, would we still respond? We would respond. Yeah. yeah. We would be the only ones. We have to respond. We would be the only ones responding. Yeah. yeah. Then we have responded historically out that far. There's other residents. That... So when you did respond out that far historically, yeah. did they receive a bill eventually down the road that said? We haven't in the past, but I think we're moving that direction to bill. Um, unless it's mutual aid, and we're to be yeah, to build it. But, but if you're think, the main responder to it, and historically we have been to other areas, we didn't set the cost recovery in precise on like a couple of years ago. So I would say probably not. Maybe, maybe not if those were <clears throat> services back then. Because I mean, the last one was probably 10, 15 years ago that I could think of it, the cost as well, just because of the time response. And I think we're going to start doing that for like sea lion caves. 
It's not in our fire district, but we respond there for fire. Oh, don't you have a we do not. Oh, I thought you did. Now, there was one at sometimes with uh, John McCann. Oh. So it was a while ago. Yeah. Question. Will this be establishing a precedence of being up a can of worms? I mean, aren't there other people who are going to come along and say, well, it's the for one, there's the committee, da 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 We do have some agreements, but they're typically they're right at the edge of our district. Um, so it, it's different. Yeah, it could it set a precedent. Yeah, I mean, what if his neighbor says, well, I want to, I want an agreement too. Um, I mean, the board would have to approve each one, but yeah, I mean, can you say, yes, we'll take this property, but not this property? I don't know. That's the question. Yeah. I think the consistency would be like, what did you do for the first one and make sure it mirrors the, the rest of okay. So if you require a sprinkler assistance for the first one, that would be the same kind of contrast. Yeah. Of the rules. So we have to look at the picture, even though in dealing with just one part of it. Well, what comes to mind on uh, that also, Director Staten, is that uh, like the people um, north of us that were trying to get us to, you know, yeah, and that, that was the first thought I had when I was brought up last meeting was, is this going to push their case forward or backwards or for them to be able to come in and say, well, you take this guy over here, so why can't you take us over here? They are farther away, I think, but um, yeah, they have a fire department closer to them than we are. So it's a different situation. Sort of, a little yeah. bit, but I think you have a good point. Um, but again, it would be up to the board to say yes or no to each request. Or yeah, the they'll fly the closer to that's, that's correct, Chief. It, it, hey, each and every one that comes to us would be separate. We're not going to just open the door, carte blanche. Any request has got to be vetted by the board, in my opinion. So I will ask Mr. Myers if he's willing to put in a, an approved automatic sprinkler system. And we'll get more information on that bridge and then the driveway that's going in. And then I'll bring back that information at the next, next board meeting. Any more questions on this one? Thank you. Uh, item F, board member training. I don't know if we want to postpone this until the next board meeting. Um, I talked to SDAO and um, we can get uh, George Dunkel to do a board member training um, on site. Uh, he won't be able to do it until January, and all we need to, to provide is uh, three or four dates that would work for you guys. I would poll everybody, including the ones not here, but... Um, Can we do an email poll? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we're looking at January. And we're looking to get Jeff Griffin as well, or just George? I didn't check on Jeff. I just checked on the order. Yeah. Maybe Jeff in the middle of the year, next year. Okay. He's also a good speaker. That's a good idea just to yep. make sure that everybody's here. We'll not be Okay. Okay. So um, Church will be uh, polling every, all the directors for their availability or lack of availability in January for discussion with um, George Uncle. Are we looking at um, a separate from a board meeting night or one well, we must be here? Yeah, day. I think we want to at least for a day, if not two, you know, for this. All day? Well, how long? Let me do the board training. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, we can bring up all the areas of discussion and really discuss everything. They want to be under time crunch that day. So, you're thinking of Saturday or weekend during the evening? Weekend, I think. I think a weekend would be good, like a Saturday. That's my so, spot. So yeah, consider weekend. So consider Saturday. So that here you go. But 
Check for potential conflicts with both games. Would <laughs> <laughs> Sundays be better? <laughs> no, um, sure. Well, or just like, it be cool. No, I, I have flexibility, so I can, I can make almost any day work. I'll just, do a, I'll just do a wide variety. And actually, I'll just probably send out all the dates for December um, or January. And then the four that work the best for everybody, that's the dates I'll take. So. Might be good to just touch base with George and see how much time would he need in considering a lot of back and forth. Mm -hmm. What would you think? Yeah, he has canned talks that we have. Okay. Thank you, Church. New business. So reviewing this month, our job description social media specialist, which is that's a that's a part-time position about 10 hours a week that, that we currently fill with Dave. Uh we'll serve team members and then policies for review uh, 103 local office, 111 collective bargaining, 112 district compliance with local budget law. And then new business. Um C, I don't know if we can make any well, we can discuss it. Uh, policy 101, uh, 0.2.6 under a uh, board of directors, um, uh, director code of ethics. And this request that uh, director Stan, you would like to modify some of the policy. Um, Basically, uh, what I referred to as an administrative change. And I went ahead and provided to all the uh, members uh, what the old writing is and the new. And I don't know if there are any objections. Because if they're not, we can just proceed. Did you did you send that to all the directors or just to Jim Felici? I sent it to all the directors. Okay, so everybody's seeing it then. Yeah. Um, so you know, if there's no objection, we can just proceed. So to proceed would be to if you want you want it to be brought up as a resolution at the December board meeting. It seems that's the easiest approach. Um. It would be easy. I mean, the, the, the board has the right to modify policy um, without a resolution. I mean, that's that's one of the, the job duties of the board is, is policy. So it seems to me like maybe a resolution, maybe it's certainly not not. I don't want to set up a precedent. I mean, the board can change policy at any time. It doesn't require a resolution. So if the board wanted to change the policy, I would say, yeah, that's certain. But I'm just looking for substantive change there and how it's done, whatever is the most convenient to the board. I think it's having, yeah, I mean, having a discussion, definitely. And then if there's a request to change the policy, we, we change the policy, bring it back to the board for, for review and approval. I think that would be, that would be the easiest. I mean, it's not difficult. Well, so it wouldn't be difficult to do a resolution, but yeah, I think that would be easy. So, there was a discussion and exactly about the change and be done with it. Because this, it's not a, as I said, it's more or less an administrative. I would propose some changes. I think your, your time frame is, is, um, Acknowledge receipt within one business day, typically. I mean, and then a decision within three business days. If there's some, we have to contact the lawyer. Is this legal? Can we do this? That it's going to be tough to do that within three business days to get an attorney's opinion. No problem there. Uh, I affirm that there is a gatekeeper to make sure that uh, whatever is based on the agenda is appropriate. And if there is, acknowledge it certainly. If there's additional time and all that. Sir, I mean, this is why we discuss these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chief Sheck, Chief yes, sir. I would like yes. to table this until the entire SBR board is present to discuss this matter. I okay. think that the president of the board needs to be, you know, in attendance for her comment on it. And I don't see a need what to put this forward. Not. What's that? No decision was going to be made tonight, but yeah, no, we'll, we'll we'll bring it up again in December. I would that expand, would be great. I would expand that and not just great. the Sizewell Valley Fire Rescue, but the entire well, should uh, um, 
basically the policies could have to be approved by the world. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that. All of them, yeah. Excellent. So just to clarify. Well, yeah, we did go with the forum from the street side. Definitely. Cool. So we'll table that. I'm coming. <laughs> well, hadn't we also discussed that we were going to bring it up at the board education training time? This, this, yeah. Um, it yeah, seems like that's what we brought up is that we were going to find out what, what SDAO knew about, what the culture is from the other fire departments to see how they're handling it. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Director comments and stretch this out as long as you can, please. <laughs> well, I'd love to go to the uh, the fire conference for my first fire director's time. conference. Yeah, and, um, it was I got a lot. It's very similar to an SDAO conference, uh -huh. except for it's smaller and you get to know more people. I think yeah. then the other one is so big that you're sort of intimidated because of all the people around and you're not sure who's who and what's what. But I really enjoyed it and the education was very good. Good. And um, I highly recommend everybody to go to now that we can go to them. Yes. For our board. They just let him in. I think I was really happy. Um, yeah, how the other side here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to learn to learn about it because I fun. know I know about an ambulance. I don't know about a fire truck. So what kind of classes did you take? Um do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> well, there was actually one on um what they call it. Um, it was on merging and um, you know consolidating together with um, with other you know like what we're trying to do. Yeah, all good. And uh, and the the legal terms of it and all that. Oh. Um, then went to another one that was um, evaluating your performance, how to evaluate your performance, and good. and what you're doing, you know, what you can improve on and stuff, and where you can pull that data from. And uh, don't ask me the rest of it. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad it was worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. They had two sessions going concurrently, so you had two choices. Oh, good. And, uh, Unless you want to do the both of them, but yeah. <laughs> Well, I understand that it might be possible to pull down the other one and have them back home. A lot of them are online, too. Oh, good. So, so I can to pull up those that I did not attend. Because I understand we had five people that were attending. So, hopefully, we covered all the bases. Yeah, that we're both, yeah. And all the vendors as well. It's a depth of information talking about the various vendors. That's, yeah, there's usually a lot of good information there. Yeah. Now, one of the sessions that was covered there, and I don't like to get into it, uh, was called uh, Zero Quorum and the risks that are involved. And to iterate for those of you in the public, it's when one board member talks with another about an issue, and then the second member contacts a third about the issue. Now there is a quorum, three out of five discussing district business seriously behind closed doors in a violation of the public meeting laws. If a citizen files a complaint with the Ethics Commission, now the accused board is having to prove its innocence and provide a plan of corrective action, given something like 21 days to do so. If that citizen is not satisfied, regardless of how the Ethics Commission feels, the board may now have to spend more resources as it enters into litigation. And it's, I think, far too easy for a disgruntled citizen or employee to shop for an opportunity to cause this grief. Mm -hmm. uh, following this last board meeting, you called a meeting which was attended by four members of the board. In spite of my attempts, it was not publicized other than that it was a meeting. No agenda was provided. I was not aware of any recording or minutes taken. And all it would take is one citizen to file a complaint that a fifth board member after the meeting got involved. So easy. Now, I did look up that uh, District Policy 101.2.6 E states, the board commits to conducting all meetings in accordance with the Oregon Public Meeting Warrants. It recognizes that district business is to be conducted in the public with the exception of specific topics not meeting the criteria for executive sessions. Well, due to my concerns, I had a conversation with one of the STAO attorneys 
at the conference. I was very careful not to provide any specific details, but he strongly recommended that anytime there's a meeting discussing any district business with the attendance by two board members, that it always be given the full treatment of the public meeting loss as though quorum will be present. A serious liability was created by how the station meeting was conducted with not two, but four board members expected to be in attendance and they were. So I reiterate that we all need to be careful not to create opportunities for mischief. Let's follow the advice of the wise and treat any future meetings involving two or more board members as though a quorum is expected and are follow. You, are you claiming that we have a quorum at that meeting? No. Okay. But all it would take is one of the four talk to somebody else about what we get discussed. And that creates serial form, according to the attorneys. Well, that could be from any meeting, any committee meeting. I mean, well, they say that the best thing to do is just anytime there's um, two or two members of the board, in this case, we have two boards, that's why we have four, and it was still not a quorum, that it be treated as a public meeting with the requirements for um, notification, agenda, reporting, all that. It, it reduces the exposure to this risk. I think the exposure is minimal in this case. Um, Maybe. Point is, um, I just use that as an example and say, we have to be careful because there can be and I heard some flat that occurred with the commissioners, the Lane County commissioners, where really. they got trapped in a serial quorum situation. Too easy. Apparently, any citizen has to do is just say, hey, I heard or I thought or whatever. And now we don't make mess. Well, that can happen no matter what. I mean, that's. We're trying to reduce the risk. I agree. Risk management. And it's, it's easy enough to do. That's what I'm suggesting. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Come well, on. yes. Uh, Director well, Stanton, you. there's a lot. Director Stanton, there's a lot of hearsay and what was said and so on and so forth. When you send emails to one board director and you do not direct to the rest of us, that can become a problem. And that's where things get kind of tangled in the wires. I don't know what your end game is here, but you're new to, to the board. And when I was new to the board, one of the presidents told me, you should stay in the woodwork and listen what's going on. And I appreciate you being on the board, but these immediate changes are quite concerning. You don't have a history in public safety. Yes, you may have been a volunteer 20, 25 years ago, but things have changed. And why you wanna change policy so quickly is very concerning. So I strongly suggest that we come together as a board and discuss your concerns without direct emails to me, which I have to reply back to you and I'm not able to speak with the rest of the board, that seems a little bit um, behind the gate, I'll call it. So you going ahead and speaking for this board at another function with SDO reps or attorneys, I'm a little concerned of what they're hearing and they're not hearing the whole story. So I would kindly ask you, mm -hmm to refrain from such action and request a meeting with the entire board and air your differences with us. Freelancing is not a good way for gaining direction of strength. I'll leave it at that. Any other director comments? I woke up early in the morning and heard that shed fire and listen to Matt coordinating. It's interesting. And you guys said me. a lot of people. Was that. That. that was a oh shit. You're on the counter fire. Other early morning. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that yeah. wasn't it. And that was uh, quite extensive. <clears throat> the amount of resources that were deployed and 
the coordination of getting water and things out there was. We actually had Maple Thing in Switzerland in July. I heard that. That was awesome. I heard that. Heard them uh, tapped out and called in and Reesport couldn't come. All kinds of things like Reesport that. Reesport did come uh, Monday night, <clears throat> Monday morning. Yeah. But uh, the coordination command, uh, I thought, went very well, at least from listening uh, from the outside. So thank you. Yeah, so we, we do really well. Thank you. Hey, any comments? I think we're ready to get the bad yeah, ready. Okay, we're going to swear in some firefighters. So we have Nick and Jessica. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, did your name? I, Nicholas Sessison. Do solemnly swear to do my duty as a firefighter for Western Lane Fire and Defense Authority to the best of my ability. Do solemnly swear to do my duty as a firefighter for Western Lane Fire and Defense Authority to the best of my ability. To serve my commanding officers with respect and loyalty. To serve my commanding officers with respect and loyalty. To serve the citizens of our community with compassion, courage, and integrity. To serve the citizens of our community with compassion, courage, and integrity. To represent my fire department community with honor and dignity, both on and off duty. To represent my fire department and community with honor and dignity, both on and off duty. And to uphold the laws and constitution of the United States of America, the state of Oregon, and the communities we protect. And, and to uphold the laws and constitutions of the United States of America, the state of Oregon, and the communities we protect. So help me God. So help me God. So you're going to be in now? Thank you. Okay. Our next board meeting is joint board meeting is Thursday, December 21st. Again, that's the third Thursday because of Christmas. Um, and the meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for showing up. See you, Jim. Director Polisi.